Let's talk about fascia and trauma. So many of us today are living with the effects of chronic stress and trauma. And our fascia, this body-wide web of connective tissue that connects to every single structure in the body, it can even insert into individual cells. It really is this fabric. When I was in naturopathic medical school, it was the fabric that we would remove in cadaver lab to get at the actual thing. It's that thin layer that we remove when cooking a chicken breast, right? That very thin white covering. It's mostly connective tissue, mostly collagen, and it connects throughout the entire body, starting at our skin and going all the way down to the bone. And there is is incredible research showing this association between our emotional state, our state of stress, our state of trauma, and how it impacts our fascial health and how it shows up in the fascia. There's this saying, the issues are in the tissues or uh, the book, The Body Keeps Score, right? This is not something that's new, but the research around it that's coming out is new and it's really exciting. What we're seeing is that when we have adhered stuck fascia, fascia is supposed to glide and move, right? It's this body-wide fabric. It helps initiate muscle engagement and power and strength. Fascia is this incredible system that connects everything in the body and it is meant to flow and glide when it becomes adhesed, when it becomes stuck. When it becomes dehydrated, it can't flow in the same manner. And what we see is this association with blocks in the fascial network and anxiety, depression, stress. They found that uh, fascial layers in the shoulder and neck area are associated with anxiety and depression. And when, in a different research study, and when there are fascial maneuvers or myofascial release that is applied to that fascial area, that is directly measured by a decrease in anxiety and depression. This association between the emotions that can be held in our actual tissue. And there was a research study out last year showing that there is the capacity for memory in cells beyond the cells that uh, we typically think of holding memory in our brain. This study was actually looking at cells in the kidney and how they actually can hold memory in a way that we thought was exclusive just to those neurons in the brain. I think that we'll start to see that same research come out around trauma. In fact, they did a research study where they took Uh, women, employees in the fashion industry, very high-paced, very stressful work environment, and they took a group of them and divided it into two. One of the groups, they said, just take a break from work. Go relax. Go lay down. Take a nap if you can. The other group, they did a fascial release of the occipital area where the goal meets the top of the neck. They did a fascial release, releasing that stuck fascia there. And what they saw was incredible. Both groups saw a decrease in respiration and heart rate, right? They're both relaxing. But in the group that received that fascial maneuver, that myofascial release, they saw an increase in their heart rate variability. This is a measure of the nervous system's balance, right? We have that parasympathetic nervous system. That's the rest, digest, you can repair, you're safe, side of the nervous system and that sympathetic nervous system that's the fight, flight, danger, alert side of the nervous system. They saw that heart rate variability, the measure of that parasympathetic nervous system and the resilience of the nervous system to go back and forth, really measuring vagal tone. That vagus nerve is our longest cranial nerve and it is associated with inflammation. The higher the tone of the vagus nerve, the less inflammation we have, the more balanced our nervous system is. And what they saw in this research study is 
after that myofascial release, these women had a higher heart rate variability, showing resilience in the nervous system. They had higher vagal tone, showing, again, less inflammation and resilience in that nervous system between the parasympathetic rest, digest, you're safe, and that sympathetic fight, flight, or freeze part of the nervous system, and they saw a greater capacity for heart coherence. This state where our heart and the electromagnetic field that it emits entrains our brain so that we're making calm, rational decisions out of our frontal lobe. We are more heart-centered in our approach. That heart coherence, that energetic ripple goes throughout the body and it balances our nervous system, it affects our immune system, our hormonal system. And that association between tight adhered fascia and the release of that fascia causing balance in the nervous system, increased heart rate variability and increased heart coherence is absolutely incredible. We have decades and decades and centuries of anecdotal stories of how body workers and physicians and healthcare workers make this association between tight stuck fascia and emotional release. When that fascia gets flow in the fascia, those emotions that trauma can release. In fact, there's also research out there equating this fascial network with the acupuncture meridians from Chinese medicine. And that flow of qi and energy being restored with fascial releases. It's an incredible thing to think about, the fascia being the anatomical site of the meridians. And this idea in Chinese medicine that the flow of energy is what gives us health. And perhaps those fascial adhesions, once we provide flow back into the fascia, then we can provide flow of energy and information throughout the system. And we know that fascia is incredibly important as this body-wide network, right? It's made up of collagen, mostly connective tissue. These collagen tubules form in fascia. They're very, very small, but they are covered in easy liquid crystal water on the outside and the inside. And this water creates a water battery. It forms on the inside of these tubules and it is negatively charged. Right outside of that negative charge is a positive charge that creates this water battery that propels water and protons and particles throughout the body. This information system really sort of reflecting that same kind of dynamic we see in the meridians. Absolutely incredible. And your fascia is unique to you. Tending to our fascial health really is a individual approach. There is no one size fits all. Circadian rhythm, movement, massage, myofascial release, creating undulating soft movements where we can find the tension in our own body. We can do this sitting down, standing up, laying down in bed, finding where we are stuck and adding rhythmic movement and breath. Breath is a way to move that fluid in the body and support fascia. There's so many different ways to support our fascial network. I encourage you to explore that. I have many different videos about fascia, about its relationship with water in the body, and how to tend to the fascia. Check them out. Thank you so much for joining me, and please stay tuned for more.